Welcome to the third episode of Talking Cricket with Akash. Since the first test between India and Australia is already underway, Akash, could we talk about the Australian team for a change? Their problems against spin have been well documented already. Rakesh Dhruv and Jalit Saxena got so many wickets against them. Do you think they'll be able to cope against Bhaji and Co? This team looks weak on paper, but uh, we'll have to also bear in mind that this Indian team is not the strongest either. Uh, so now two relatively weaker teams uh, uh, going through a phase of transition are up against each other. Prima facie, Australia are having some serious issues. Uh, if you see the two uh, warm-up games, one against both President Eleven and the other against uh, the India A side, there have been uh, quite a few chinks which have been exposed. And it's not very often that you talk about Australia and you talk about uh, weaknesses uh, and glaring weaknesses uh, at that. And this is one team which has many. You can talk about their ability to play the turning ball. You can talk about uh, their own ability to turn the ball. Unless things change dramatically, radically in the next uh, three weeks, four weeks time, uh, I think uh, Australians are going to have a really tough time in India. And apart from spin, do they have any other weaknesses? While we are talking about the weaknesses, I'd also like to highlight a couple of strengths. One, uh, their superior, fast superior, uh, fast bowling attack. I think their resources are brilliant. They are much better there than their counterparts. And uh, hence, I think they'll have a role to play. Uh, Siddle, Pattinson, Stark will test the Indians. Their batting lineup will revolve around Watson, Warner uh, and Clark. If these three fire, I think uh, others will have a very good show. And India will have a game on its hands. Now, the Australians had announced their playing eleven about two, three days before the match began. And they've just named one spinner. Is that brave or are they missing the trick here? Uh, they haven't picked Doherty, which I think uh, may just backfire. But then this is the first test match. They want to go in with their strength, which is uh, their fast bowling. And two, I think uh, the spinners haven't really given them a lot of confidence uh, with the show in the first two games, the warm-up games. There is a serious paucity of good spinners in Australia. They are up against a team which is generally known to be good players of spin and uh, will be playing on surfaces which will assist spinners. They have picked four fast bowlers in Siddle, uh, Pattinson, Stark and then uh, Henriquez as as a backup uh, all-rounder who could bat and uh, bowl seam up. Let's see if the pitch is not too dusty, if it doesn't break up too much, then I think their decision to leave out Doherty will backfire. An Aussie who'd really be under the scanner here would be Matthew Wade, the Australian wicketkeeper. He had a bad series when Sri Lanka went down and, you know, Healy came out with a statement where he said that Wade didn't have the technique to keep for Australia. How tough would it be for him to come to the subcontinent pitches, which are anyhow tough to play on, uh, to keep on? And uh, how big a test is it for him? Adam Gilchrist, uh, when, when he came to India, he thought that India was the toughest place to keep. A lot of things do keep happening uh, around the keeper uh, when, when you're playing on Indian subcontinental pitches. And uh, that is where the technique gets tested. You'll have to time your uh, getting up. I think that's the key for a keeper. Because uh, on Indian pitches, on subcontinental pitches, the bounce is slightly on the lower side. And the lower you stay, the better it is. Uh, and that goes against the grain, uh, against their uh, kind, their way of keeping. Because uh, in Australia, you can stand up and keep. The ball is not going to keep low. So Matthew Wade's technique will also be tested. Uh, but then it's, it's a good test. And we'll get to know whether Matthew Wade uh, uh, was the right choice or Brad Haddon could have been given a go, especially uh, given his uh, uh, credential as, as, as a batsman. Uh, not just as a keeper, but someone who can actually tonk the bowlers, uh, who could uh, be very similar to Matt Pryor, someone uh, who actually demolished Indian bowling in that uh, England store to India. We do have a couple of questions on Twitter, of course. The first one's by at K Ramdas Pai, and it's about Shane Watson. He questions Shane Watson's ability to replace Ricky Ponting at possibly the number four position, whether he has a technique and temperament to be able to succeed at that spot. Well, it's a tough one. Seriously, replacing uh, Ricky Ponting are always going to be tough. And uh, by someone who has been shuffled uh, up and down the batting order more than anyone else, it is going to be slightly tough. But having said all that, Shane Watson is a quality player. He's a, he's a class act. He has played enough cricket on the Indian uh, subcontinental pitches during the IPL and has succeeded. He's not someone who actually struggles against spin uh, too badly. If he puts his mind to the matter and, and starts going after the bowlers, I think uh, he'll be able to come good. But then he'll have to 
be very lucid, very fluid uh, in his thought process. Uh, he can't be acting like or can't be behaving like a viper from one extreme to the other extreme because that's what happens uh, when when people from Australia, England, South Africa come to India and uh, when they encounter these dusty pitches, there is a tendency to either go into the shell or go overboard uh, being aggressive. Uh, I think you'll need to find that right concoction uh, and if Watson manages to do that, he's someone who can take the attack to the opposition. Whether he'll be able to do that or not, we'll get to know in good time. With regards to his technique, I think uh, there is no need to change too much. In any case, there isn't uh, too much time to change. So I think it's all about the temperament, your mindset. And if you approach the innings well, uh, Watson has the goods to deliver. That covers Australia for now. Uh, but I will try and squeeze in one little last question. And this one's about the Indian team. Uh, it's about Dhoni, actually. This is asked by Karthik Aryan, um, who wrote in on YouTube. He asks why Dhoni is still the captain after 10 losses in 18 months. Were the selectors influenced by a few ODI performances to make him a test captain? And won't Sehwag as one last chance or Kohli a more futuristic option be a better candidate as test captain? Personally, I think Mahendra Singh Dhoni's test captaincy is hanging by a very thin thread. He's done well in ODI. He has led India to uh, an ODI World Cup victory. But then his test fortunes or the team's fortunes have plummeted under his leadership. And hence, it's absolutely right to feel and think and talk about his captaincy and uh, the prospects of others uh, leading the side in place of him. And uh, I think it was uh, about the right time to try someone like Virat Kohli. Yes, I know that he hasn't been in good form and he's too young perhaps. But then uh, Graham Smith was also very young. He was only eight test matches old when he took over the South African reigns. And he's led them to, I think, 100 test matches and 49 victories. Dhoni has led uh, the team for a very long time. He looks slightly jaded. He looks slightly defensive when it comes to test match cricket. And I think it was uh, the right time, the right opportunity to blood a youngster and see how he goes. It's the last home series that we are playing. And if we haven't tried Kohli now, we won't be able to try him in uh, South Africa, New Zealand or England. Because um, if we do that, we'll be just throwing him at the deep end. It may just still happen, but then I think uh, we are missing the bus right now. Thank you, Akash. That's all we have time for today. For those of you listening in, if you want to leave some feedback or ask some question to Akash Chopra, tweet with the hashtag Talking Cricket with Akash. And I'll select a few to ask him in the next episode. That's all for today. Chop Chops. Chop Chops.